Hi everyone and welcome to Smart Alex Coaching. In this video we're going to be looking at how to apply discriminant theory in solving questions. Given the quadratic expression x squared plus k minus 3 times x plus k, what values of k will make the expression positive for all values of x? Now every time we get a quadratic expression, we know that the graph we're going to get is a parabola. And there are several cases that we can have. So in the first case, we can get a parabola that cuts the x-axis at two positions, 1 and 2, and concave up. Alternatively, the parabola may concave down, still cutting the x-axis at two positions. The third case is when the parabola does not cut but just only touches the x-axis at one position, it can either concave up or concave down. So we're going to call this diagram 3 and diagram 4. Alternatively, our parabolas do not have to touch the x-axis or cut it at all, in which case it can be totally above the x-axis or totally below the x-axis as in diagrams 5 and diagram 6. In the first four diagrams, these type of parabolas is what we call indefinite parabolas because its value can either be positive negative or equal to zero. In diagram five, we have what is called a positive definite parabola. Here, the parabola is always going to be above the x-axis, hence its y value will always be positive. Diagram six is an example of a negative definite parabola. Its value is always going to be negative. Now, things to note, the parabola will always concave up if the coefficient of x squared is always positive. And in this case, in this question here, our coefficient of x squared is 1. And because of that, we're always going to have a parabola that concaves up since 1 is positive. And what we want to look for in this question is we're going to be looking for the value of k that will make this expression positive for all values of x. In other words, this is a scenario we're looking for, a positive definite parabola. Before we start the question, we need to review the concept of discriminant quickly. So recall that the quadratic formula is given by x is equal to minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. This expression here underneath the square root sign is what we call the discriminant and we use the delta symbol which looks like the triangle to denote it. Now the quadratic formula will return us two solutions, not necessarily real roots, they can be real or complex roots. The first root is going to be given by negative b plus the square root of the discriminant over 2a. The second root is going to be given by negative b minus the square root of the discriminant over 2a. When the discriminant is greater than 0, we're going to have two real roots, x1 and x2 will both be real roots and it's going to cut the parabola at two points on the x-axis. So these are situations we can have. When the discriminant is equal to 0, what's going to happen is x1 will be equal to x2 and we have got a repeated or a double root and it will touch the x-axis at one point. Now, when the discriminant is less than zero, we have no real roots. In fact, what we have is x1 and x2 being complex roots and so our parabola will be totally above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So as we describe, this is a scenario we're looking for, a positive definite. So we're going to require our discriminant to be less than zero. And of course, our coefficient of x squared will need to be positive. So the question we started off with was expression x squared plus k minus 3 times x plus k. We will need the discriminant to be less than zero, not equal to zero. In other words, we want the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, which when we sub in, we're going to get k minus 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times k to be less than zero. 
Expanding this, we we're going to get k squared minus 6k plus 9 minus 4k less than 0 or k squared minus 10k plus 9, which is less than 0. And we can factorize this expression into k minus 9 times k minus 1, which is less than 0. And this is the quadratic inequality we want to solve. So to solve the quadratic inequality, the method I recommend my students do is to do a quick sketch of the graph. So here we've got k minus 9 times k minus 1 is being less than 0. This is a parabola and this horizontal axis is now k. The roots are at 1 and 9. We want the parabola, we're interested in the section of the parabola that is less than 0, another word below the horizontal axis, not equal to zero, so it's going to be this part of the parabola. Now this is where k is going to be between 9 and 1, and that is in fact the solution to the question we set out to solve. And in the next slide, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these together to help improve our understanding using Desmos. So we're now going to use Desmos to put everything together to help improve our understanding. So we were interested in the value of k. So what I've done was I've set k as a slider going from negative 5 to 15 with incremental steps of 1. I've also written down here the expression y is equal to x squared plus k minus 3x plus k. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the value of k. And what you'll see is that this parabola here is going to move as the value of k changes. So starting with k is equal to negative 5, we see that the parabola has two roots at slightly less than 0 and between 8 and 10. So I'm going to increase the value of k. So as I increase it, the parabola keeps on moving up. At this point, when k is equal to negative 1, we still have two roots. So this is still an indefinite parabola. And when k is 0, it's still indefinite. Now, when k is 1, the parabola now touches the x-axis. And once we exceed that, then the parabola becomes positive definite. And it keeps on being so. And as you can see, k is 5, k is 6, 7, 8. And once it gets to 9, it touches the x-axis again. And once it exceeds 9, the parabola now shifted to the left and you can see that it's getting two roots again. And what happens is as k gets larger and larger, the problem will keep on going downwards with two roots. So you can see that when we started off with this equation asking us to find values of k that will make this problem positive for all values of x, that's why when we solved it, we got the value of k between 1 and 9. So as you see, between 1 and 9, our problem is totally above the x-axis with the exception that when k is 1 and k is 9, it touches the x-axis. So hopefully that helped improve your understanding. And if you like this video, please subscribe, please give it a thumbs up and share it. That would really, really help us. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.